Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Art or Feed at the LCS Virtual Tailgate. My name is Thomas Ranby, my summoner name is Riot Hylia, and I'm a concept artist and illustrator on the League of Legends skins team. Uh, some of the work I've put out recently you might recognize. I contributed concepts to Spirit Blossom Cassiopeia, Heartseeker Jinx, Coven Zyra and LeBlanc, Splendid Staff Nami, and I also work pretty extensively with summoner icons and emotes in League of Legends. So today, in keeping with the throwback theme for the LCS Virtual Tailgate overall, I thought it would be fun to take a look at one of the 17 original champs that hit League of Legends in its alpha stage all the way back in 2009. So we're going to be taking a look at Annie the Dark Child today. So without further ado, let's get started. Now I wasn't around when League entered its alpha and beta and then full release. Um, I started playing in sometime around mid-2013, uh, just shortly after Lissandra released. So I wasn't around to see Annie as she first hit the game. If you've been playing since the early days, this image might look pretty familiar to you. Um, Annie's seen a little bit of changes since the game first launched. When League first came out, the art style was more driven by efficiency than anything else. All the champions were constructed of relatively few polygons. They were all very triangular, because the more polygons a model has, the more uh, memory it takes up in the files of the game. So as League evolved and we kind of learned more about the engine we were working in and we got to do more elaborate things with our characters, Characters, uh, you've probably recognized along the way we've started updating the champions visually. So Annie started out in this iteration and after a couple of years uh, we took the time to update her and sort of translate her into a fresher, more modern art style. Now looking between these two images, not a whole lot changed as far as Annie's design is concerned. Most of the elements um, in the first version did carry over to the new one, but we got to kind of recreate them in a higher fidelity and really showcase a little bit more of Annie's personality. So we're going to be drawing um, the newer version of Annie today. Uh, we're going to leave old Annie in the past, um, but it's always nice to kind of take a look back at how things started um, and just how far the game has come since its early days in 2009. So yeah, we're gonna take a look at new Annie today. I have loaded up a couple images here at the bottom of my PSD just for reference moving forward. I'm gonna be working digitally today, um, but if you'd like to follow along at home uh, using a pencil or a pen and a piece of paper, I've formatted my PSD to be um, just like an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Um, so you should be good to go just following along traditionally. I've also, just in the interest of time, also blocked out just a tiny little uh, sketch for what I've got planned today. So grab your pencil, grab your paper, and let's get started. All right, so everything that I'm drawing right off the bat is gonna be in light blue. So you're gonna want to really press very, very lightly. We're just putting a really, really quick sketch layer down on the paper um, that we can go in on top of with a stronger line uh, later and clean up. So. We're going to be working a lot with simple uh, shapes, mostly circles and triangles, just to kind of block out the silhouette um, of Annie's head and shoulders. Um, so Annie's got a pretty big head. Uh, she's got a lot of, like, the interesting thing about Annie is she's mostly um, round, like, circular shapes because she's, you know, youthful, she's, she's fun-loving, she's innocent, but she's also got a little bit of a mean streak to her, a little bit of psychosis running underneath the surface. So all those round shapes are punctuated by some pretty sharp spikes like you can see in her hair and in her headband. So let's start out just kind of blocking in the shape for Annie's head. So we're gonna do about the size of your fist, uh, just a really light, circular shape in the center of your page and make sure you're leaving room at the top, bottom, and sides for us to continue putting detail and different elements of her silhouette in. So this is basically just going to inform the back of Annie's skull as it leads into the front of her face. So we're starting out with just one plain circle and then we'll add another circle that's about the same size but a squeeze it just a little bit more vertically. So a little bit more of an oval shape, but not going down too long so that her face stays pretty confined within a sphere and rounded out. So what that circle is gonna be informing is the front of Annie's face as it comes down in a 3D space. And basically the human skull is kind of constructed of three circular shapes. If you're drawing a simplified version of it, the back of the skull, the front of the face, and then we'll do one last circular shape here just kind of brushing up against the left-hand side of the front circle um, and running up 
with the, the rear circle kind of intersecting down um, the center of it. And this will inform where Annie's ear is sitting on the side of her head. So those three circles are basically just gonna inform uh, the shape of Annie's head, um, and we're working in what's called a three-quarter view. Um, so Annie is not quite facing towards the camera. She's shifted a little bit, um, almost like she was looking uh, past you in space. So now that we've got the basic shape laid out, um, we're going to create what's called the center line of the face. And this is how we're going to map all of Annie's features onto her head. So you can just kind of picture like a, a vertical line running down the center of the face, starting from the back of the skull and just sort of wrapping around the face so that we can kind of picture this as a, an object in three dimensions and not just a flat uh, image on a piece of paper. So take your time blocking your shapes in. And once you've got the face blocked in. Let's just go in and put a couple more shapes in to define Annie's neck and her shoulders. So right here at the bottom of the facial circle, we'll just draw a tiny little oval here that we can extend down into a cylinder to show us where Annie's neck is going to sit. You can kind of line up the edge of this with the center line of that face that we've already blocked out. And this is all really, really stylized. It's basically just taking the basic shapes of the, of the human skull and just kind of making them real cartoony, really exaggerated. So we'll block in Annie's neck. And then the last shapes that we'll use to block in Annie's features, um, feel free to play around with the, the size and proportions of these. Everything that I'm saying is just kind of a guide and you can feel free to sort of exaggerate what you'd like, make changes wherever you feel necessary. Um, if you want to, you know, push things in your own style, go for it. We're just kind of using basic shapes to create any silhouette. So let's add one more large circle here next to the cylinder for her poofy princess style sleeve. Another circle here just to inform just kind of the basic shape of Annie's upper torso. And then a third circle to the right. And that'll just be the other sleeve that's sitting behind everything in that 3D space. So those are the basic shapes that are gonna inform Annie's head and upper body. Um, now that we've kind of got the, the general anatomy blocked in, we can start to go in and plan out where exactly Annie's features are gonna sit. So, it's gonna look pretty nightmare fuel at first. Uh, like I said, make sure you're drawing this very lightly on your paper so that you can go in and, you know, if you'd like to erase these details once you've put your fine lines down, feel free. Um, but this should all be very light because we're gonna be doing the details on top of this. So let's start, um, and you can kind of close off the space between the center line of your face and the edge of the face circle here. With just one circle to inform where her left eye is going to sit. And after you've got the circle blocked out there, we're gonna take another circle here, and that's gonna inform us where Annie's other eye is. And something that's uh, kind of a nice way to remember about the position of the eyes in the face, um, these two circles, you can just think about um, them being equidistant from one another. So there'll be another circle of the same size in between the eyes. And that applies no matter what direction the face is looking. So just picture this same amount of space between these two circles informing where the eyes are. And then we can also do maybe like a tiny little diamond shaped here, lined up with the center line of the face. And that's just gonna inform where the nose is. And then last but not least, just for now, just a small little line. She's gonna be pretty mad once we start drawing in her features. Annie's always angry. Just a tiny little line to inform where the mouth is gonna be. So now we've got Annie's head, neck, body and shoulders blocked out, as well as the position of the features mapped out on the face. So now that we've got that, we can start going in and adding some secondary details like Annie's hair, her clothing, um, the headband that she's got on, eyebrows and eyelashes, you name it. So we're gonna start with almost like a, a football sort of shape that sticks out a little bit from the circles you've created on the head. And this is gonna inform 
where the bangs are gonna sit. And you can keep the left-hand side of this just kind of lined up with that circle you created already for the front of her face. And then for the two strands of hair that are coming down the side of Annie's head, I like to think of them as bananas. They're kind of banana shaped if you, if you stylize it. Um, you can just draw two curved banana shapes. Just kind of hanging down from the side of her head. Okay. And the very last rough shape that we need to block in to get all of the silhouette uh, features filled in is the back of Annie's hair, which sort of swoops up in an aggressive, um, almost triangular shape. And then the two ears that sit on her headband, which are, they're basically curved to look like demon horns. It lends her a really mischievous, really fun element to her silhouette. So let's take this line that we've established for the back of the head and just kind of continue it in an almost sort of S curve. And then just connect that in a curved line down so it just kind of intersects with the tip of, of the banana here. And you can kind of follow suit on the opposite side. So the hair juts out just a little bit. And last but not least, try to think of these lines you've, you've laid out for yourself as like a map. Um, so like I said, you can kind of use this this line that we've got here uh, to establish the, the front of the face, that can also be used for the edge of her bangs. You can use that to inform um, the elements that are making up her, her headband where the ears are sitting. Um, you can line up the tips of the devil horn with the intersection of the circle for the back of the skull and where you have your hair coming out. You can play it pretty fast and loose with the, uh, the positioning of these, as long as they're visible at the top of her head, they're going to get the job done. They're going to look like demon horns. So that's the basic uh, construction of Annie's body, face, hair, and accessories. So now that we've got that laid out, I'm going to turn the opacity down on this layer. So make sure you're still drawn pretty soft. I'm going to make a new layer for myself, pick a darker color, and now we can go in and sort of start to delineate the actual features on Annie. So let's start with let's start with her eyelashes. Annie wears a pretty heavy eyeliner in game, um, just so that at scale, when you're looking at the small character model, it's really clearly visible where her eyes are sitting on her face. Um, so you can think about it almost like a cat eye kind of shape. Um, you want to take start about um, about at the halfway point of the circles you've delineated for your eyes, and just sort of do a line that's kind of almost hooding them, just wrapping on top. You can do that on both sides. And that's going to inform where the upper eyelid is sitting in the drawing. And then from there, you can just kind of thicken the outer edges. It's almost like it's a makeup tutorial. You can thicken the outer edges to a point that's going to intersect with the edge of the face and the hair that we've established. And then just continue that line down just at the same at the same place where you've already put the circles for the eyes. Okay. And feel free to leave a little bit of negative space, just blank. Um, you don't have to ring the entire eye itself. Okay. And what I like to do when I'm drawing um, Annie in particular, you can kind of see it in the emote at the bottom of the page. Um, I like to keep her eyebrows sort of intersecting with uh, her eyelashes because that really helps to sell just how angry she is. So you can kind of think of um, an angry eyebrow almost as like, um, let's start on our left hand side. You can think of it as kind of like a reverse check mark. So just start a line up here at the edge of her bangs and sweep it down coming to a point so that we can really sell just how aggressive and angry she is. 
And you can do the same on the other side, just kind of start at the corner of the eye. And bring the brow up so that she looks mad. Okay. And when you're thinking of um, the iris and the pupil in the eye, uh, you want to think of it as a full circle, um, no matter where it's sitting. So if we were to, don't draw what I'm about to draw, but if we were going to uh, draw in his eyes as wide open, the pupil would be a full circle like that. So you want to think of that anytime, even if the eye is half-lidded, you want to think of yourself as the full circle being present, you're just masking some of it behind the lid of the eye. So let's just draw in the visible part of that circle, and then a smaller circle inside that will fill in for her pupil. And you can do the same on the other side. Okay. So now we've got the eyes blocked in, we can start to move on to other features of the face. I think we should start by delineating the edge of the jaw so that way we can kind of just fill in the shapes in the hair as we come to it. So just a little curved line here, just slightly between the brow and the edge of the eyelashes, and then continue it down, following around the circle you've already established in your sketch layer. just to fill out the edge of Annie's jaw. So we're starting to block out the features in the face. Um, the square that you've already laid out underneath the eye for her nose, feel free to just do like a tiny little, just a, a small little line to delineate the nostrils. And that's basically all you need to define the nose. Just two lines, almost like a seagull kind of shape. And then we'll just do one more line underneath there for her mouth and a tiny little line underneath that for her bottom lip. Okay. And you can always come back to these elements after the fact, once you've gotten everything blocked in, and just start to add some, some extra detail, you know, spice things up a little bit. If you want to go in and add eyelashes, if you want to do, um, you know, visible strands in the hair like Annie's got in her character model, feel free to go in and add those details as you see fit. I'm going to keep things pretty simple for today. Um, but so now that we've got her face blocked in, we can start on other elements of the silhouette. I'm going to start just kind of brushing in the shapes in the hair that's framing the sides of her face, leaving things pretty simple and keeping things soft until they come to a pretty aggressive point at the edge of the face. Okay. And keep this line coming up behind the bangs and that'll just kind of inform us where Annie's headband is going to sit. I'm going to fill in the circle that we've delineated for Annie's ear. Just maybe like a small little reversed sort of C shape, just to give that a little bit more definition. You can tell that there's like a little bit of, um, a little bit of structure there for the ear. Okay, so Annie's bangs all kind of flow forward, um, so I'm just going to Using the center line of the face as a guide, I'm just gonna draw in, oop, sorry, my pressure sensitivity busted there for a second. Using the center line of the face as a guide, I'm just gonna kind of brush some shapes forward until they come to a point here at the center line of the face. Okay. And so now let's fill in the rest of her headband. Up to the demon ears. And because you've already mapped out all of these shapes in your sketch layer, it should be pretty easy to just come up 
and with a stronger pressure, just kind of block those shapes out. And we'll just kind of mirror these shapes on the inside of the ear, because Annie's got like a lighter material, almost like a felt kind of material. So that they really read as ears and not as straight up devil horns. A little subtlety. Okay. All right, so now that we've got those elements blocked in, we can start to finish up the top of the face. And like I said, feel free to, you can just keep these same shapes if you wanna keep things pretty simple. If you'd like to brush out some, you know, some edges to the hair, almost like she's gotten the emote, the hair is kind of like flaring out. Feel free to go as crazy with it as you want. But if you want to, you can just kind of follow the same shape that you've already delineated and just keep it simple. I'm gonna add in a little bit of shape variation there just to keep things Keep things a little different. And just follow suit on the other side. Okay. So now that we've got Annie's head and hair blocked in, we're gonna move on to the neck, torso, and shoulders. Um, Annie's sleeves are like a poofy princess style sort of uh, material. So they're, they're not quite circular. They're almost like, um, almost like a rounded triangular sort of shape. Uh, so you can use the circles that you've already created for the torso as a base, but let's start at the one that's gonna be foremost um, towards the camera in the 3D space. On her right-hand side, our left, just kind of extend the edges of this circle almost like a mushroom cap kind of shape. Oops. And then when you've got that basic shape blocked out, you can just kind of do it in with a rounded line so that the implication of that poofiness is present. That's like the easiest way to draw that style of sleeve. Just keep things very stylized and very exaggerated. If you want to, you can add maybe a little bit of the frills she's got going on underneath. Now that we got that blocked in, let's add, let's go for her collar next. So Annie has this, um, like a school uniform uh, raised collar. So we can kind of bring it to a point here at the front of her body almost like a, a heart shape that's obscured by the front of her face. And we'll just close it off, connecting to where we brought it down to a point. And then you can put a simple line just on the edge of that cylinder that we blocked out for her neck. And there we go. You can see your collar starting to take shape. And then let's also just draw in the edge of Annie's sweater vest. Just a simple little, little pointed line that's kind of following just the vaguest edge of that circle that you drew for her torso. My pressure sensitivity messed up there. That doesn't happen when you're using a regular pencil. Um, Okay, and the very last thing we're gonna do is what we've already done for the sleeve that's already present, just making sure that we're not uh, overlapping any of the lines that we've already created for her collar or for her sweater. Just a simple little rounded shape. And like I said, feel free to go as crazy with the details as you want or keep things pretty simple.
And that's the basic gist of Annie's silhouette as far as shape is concerned. You can go in now if you'd like to, you know, really flesh out the position of her hair. You can add some more lines in there. You can really, um, if, you're, if you're feeling adventurous and you want to add a little bit of shading, feel free to go in. You can block out some shade in her hair, in her eyes, in her skin. Uh, the sky's really the limit. This is basically just like the, the simplest way to kind of block out the features. I'm gonna go in and define her eyes a little bit more. And just kind of clean up any messy edges that you see. And there you have it. All that's left is to sign your masterpiece and hit us up with your beautiful renditions of Annie the Dark Child. Feel free to tweet us with the hashtag LCS Virtual Tailgate. You could tweet me personally at Fairy Fountain. I would absolutely love to see anything that you guys have done over the course of this really simple, just instruction on the basic silhouette of Annie. I hope you guys had as much fun as I did and we'll catch you on the next episode of Art or Feed.